Hey everyone, Scooby-Doo here and welcome to a brand new video. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of my life-size Star Wars figure builds. And we're going to uh, make the announcement on the Darth Maul life-size build. So if you've been watching my channel for the last few years at least, uh, I've been getting into doing the life-size uh, figure builds. And here obviously we have uh, Fett and I have a, a Jetta uh, patrol officer and of course Kylo Ren. And then I also have a bunch of other ones in the Star Wars room, which we'll just go ahead, I'll, we'll just take a look at them really quickly, just because I'm showing you my life-size figures. Over here now, the um, life-size Luke, that one's almost finished, I just have to weather it. And of course, there's the Yoda that we were working on as well. And then over here, we have a uh, Jawa, and then we have a Darth Vader, and an R2-D2, and... We also have uh, BB-8 as well. And in doing all these different life-size figures, uh, there's different types of costs that are involved in making them. Get that back on there. So I'd probably say my most expensive one was the FET. That one I got a lot of different parts from a lot of places and it's, it's, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good outfit. It's a really good build. And that's another thing regarding doing the life size figures. If I was in shape, I could actually wear any one of these costumes. I could just take them off and put them right on. Um, again, the armor from the FET, I got some of it from the uh, dented helmet. Uh, that's a real leather um, ammo belt or pouch and his gauntlets. And he has a jet pack that lights up. Uh, same thing with the Stormtrooper. That's a Shepperton armor set. And then I did all of the uh, painting on it. But uh, again, all that can be taken off and can be worn, which is kind of cool. So that one uh, was somewhat expensive. And I think probably my cheapest one so far has been the Kylo. Between the Kylo and the Darth Vader, actually. Um, that was the least expensive. I, I think those are around four to five hundred dollars for the builds. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to, because I have the new Mandalorian Hot Toys figure coming this week, so look for a review on that. But that one, because the Hot Toys is kind of getting expensive now, well they've always been expensive, but even getting more expensive. Um, by the time I pay for the shipping and the tax and everything else, it almost comes to $300. That's for a 1-6 scale figure. Now they're really nice figures, but $300 is starting to get a little bit expensive. So what I wanted to challenge myself with is to build a life-size figure for $300 or less, but still have it look really good. So that's what we are going to be doing. We're going to be doing a Darth Maul. And so first things first is I, I wanted to find a mask for the Darth Maul. And I was looking around. I'm not like an expert on masks. Um, but I came across the Agawa mask. That one seemed to be kind of the most expensive out of the mass produced ones. It actually comes from Japan and I'll show you the mask. It's not going to look that great because it's not going to be on anything. But I'll move the camera over. This is the mask here. Uh, I did try to put it on myself and it is really snug. Now I'm, I'm a big adult. I'm 6'2". Uh, it was really tight. Uh, which actually I think you kind of want that in this type of mask. And one thing I liked about this mask opposed to the other ones, even though he doesn't really have like a bloodshot eyes, just to me that looked much more menacing that way. And some of the other masks are kind of more yellow, which I know he had that in his eyes, but it's like too much. And uh, I also like how they did the paint applications on the nose. Uh, the horns look really nice. Um... And also, too, it only goes around the head. I've seen other ones that actually uh, have a neck piece that actually goes down to part of your shoulders, which I could imagine those are probably a, a real pain to wear, especially if you're claustrophobic, because it would be a really tight fit. So I got this one here actually on Amazon. And on eBay, they run with shipping between like... I don't know, 80, 90 dollars up to like 150. And most of these come from Japan. 
fact, this one you can see here because it's all in Japanese writing. And it says made in Japan, so. Uh, this one here, I actually found on Amazon. It was the only one that they had on Amazon from this particular vendor. I didn't know that when I ordered it. It just showed that it was out of stock as soon as I ordered it. Uh, this was only $45, and that was with the shipping, and I got it in three days. Where the, um, the ones on eBay, again, they're between $80, $90, all the way up to almost $200, and those you have to wait like a month to get. So I was really happy to find this. And so I decided I wanted to show you the mask because I have not seen any reviews on this particular style of mask at all on, uh, on YouTube. So again, really cool mask. And again, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to uh, do all this for under $300. So we'll be doing some other videos regarding the build. Um, I could tell you the mannequins that I use already, they're with shipping, they're like $79. They're like the cheapest ones that you can get, but actually the coolest ones for doing modifications. And then we have the outfit. Uh, actually, I already ordered that, but that's going to be like a month before I get it because that I did have to order from China. Same with the boots. But uh, we will do other videos. And just to take a quick look, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause the camera and I'm going to See if I can put this mask on to my Kylo Ren since he has a hood already and we'll see how that looks and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so we put the mask on him. Um, he looks really good. However, I am aware that the particular mannequin that I used for the Kylo Ren is an egg, uh, egg shape, no, egg, egg head, <laughs> that's it. It's an egg head uh, mannequin, which the head for it is kind of big, so it is stretching out his face, so that's why he looks a little bit odd. Uh, but it still looks really good, and I can see, uh, because I've actually tried the mask on the mannequin style that I'm going to be using, because it's the same one I used for my Stormtrooper. That one fits much better. It has a tighter jawline and a kind of a longer jaw. So it's not going to have his face stretched out as much. I'll still go ahead and show you the uh, mask up close. But again, this is the mannequin that is on is kind of stretching out his face a little bit. So he's going to look, you know, his teeth are showing a lot more. But anyways, I think it's going to look awesome. Again, Kylo Ren outfit, similar, but not the same. Plus also to, um, you know, the mannequin head. I've already tested all this out. So if you're wanting to do a build of Darth Maul, uh, you would definitely want to use the cheaper mannequin anyway. So that helps out. Again, those are like 79. Because I'm trying to do the math. The, the, the mannequin uh, with, with the shipping is $79. The mask was 45 So we'll just say we're at 125 130 somewhere right in there. So we still have $170 to play with. I know that the uh, outfit that I got was like $99. And I think the boots were $40. So I still got some room to play around if I need to buy like a under garment for him. And a few other things. So there we go. Life size figures. Uh, look for the... I don't know why the lighting is weird in here today. Sometimes the... My phone records really well and sometimes I get a lot of glares. Probably because of the Stormtrooper. He's right underneath the light and it's kind of deflecting. But uh, anyways, again, the 1-6 uh, scale review of the Mandalorian. Hopefully sometime this week. Maybe Tuesday if I get it on Tuesday. And uh, again, we have the build on the virtual pinball. And just to show you, I, I know this is all Star Wars stuff, but... I went ahead and did the modifications on the uh, hovering DeLorean, which is right there. The tires were a little bit off, so just to show you, I got them much tighter. Um, oops. They're much tighter now on the sides. How they should be. I kind of had it, they were kind of hanging down too low. And um, I'm in the middle of building the other one right now as we speak. And I'm going to post up this video and get right back to work. And I shall talk to you guys later.